guys, welcome. My name is Shaheen. I'm a physics PhD student at the University of Texas at Dallas. And in this video, I'll be talking about the Fourier transform. Uh, I know there's tons, maybe not even tons, thousands, <laughs> millions of videos about Fourier transforms on YouTube. But I just wanted to post a quick digestible video on the topic, mainly to serve as a primer for my next two videos, which will be on the fast Fourier transform and something called the Wavelet transform. By no means am I an expert in any of these topics, uh, I just use them sometimes in my research. In the future I'll be posting more videos relating to physics research, data science, machine learning, so stay tuned for those. Again, I'm not an expert in these topics, so if you hear me say something stupid, make a mistake, say something wrong, I invite you to please leave a comment, let me know. I'm going to do my best to read all the comments and reply to them. If you find this video helpful and you want to see more like it in the future, uh, subscribe, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. All right, without any further ado, let's get into the video. So everyone's undoubtedly familiar with time series, even, even if you haven't heard the term. So time series is simply a set of values indexed by time. Uh, so you flip on your favorite news network. You, they're typically talking about how stocks are amazing or stocks are terrible or whatever. And typically they're showing uh, like a stock price or here we have an index price uh, plotted over time. So we have time on the x-axis and we have the price on the y-axis. Um, or even more uh, re relevant to our daily lives, seven-day forecast. So here we have uh, the temperature plotted over time. So these are time series. It's just a set of values indexed over time. So a signal is a specific kind of time series. The only difference here is a signal typically represents a physical event. Uh, so for example, you could be listening to your favorite record. That could be represented as an audio signal. So you have like this uh, time oscillating amplitude, uh, or some, a lot of times it's going to be a voltage. Or you could have a bimetric signal. So this is something I deal with in my research. Um, here we have the surface body temperature plotted over time. Uh, so time series signals, very common. Everyone's probably really familiar with them. This is just uh, terminology. Okay, so another very common thing and is very fundamental to understanding the Fourier transform is waves. So a wave is simply an, any oscillating quantity around an equilibrium. So there are two basic properties of waves, amplitude, which is the magnitude of the quantity, and, and frequency, which characterizes the oscillation. So here we have a sine wave. Uh, so the amplitude is characterized by the y-axis, and the frequency uh, is characterized by the number of peaks in a given time interval. So now getting to the bread and butter, the main topic, main event of the video, the Fourier transform. So Fourier transform, um, intuitively is a decomposition of a signal into sines and cosines. So here we have this purple signal, uh, f of x, plotted over time. If we do the Fourier transform, it turns out we can decompose this into two simple sine waves of different frequencies. And the way we do this is via the Fourier transform, which is given by this expression. Uh, so we have f of k is equal to the infinite integral of f of x, which is our signal, our time series, our function, whatever you're, you want to plug in there, times e to the minus 2 pi i k x dx. Um, and if you're confused that I've been talking about sines and cosines and you don't see a sine or a cosine in this expression, I uh, just want to put here as a reminder, we have Euler's formula, which relates e to the i x to cosine and sine. So another way to think of the Fourier transform is, uh, in simple terms, is if we have a signal plotted over time, uh, a Fourier transform simply changes our x-axis from time to frequency. Uh, so here we have the same signal. Uh, it's made up of those two simple sine waves, as we saw in the previous slide. So if you were to compute the Fourier transform and plot the resulting, what they call power spectrum, uh, resulting from the Fourier transform, you get something that looks like this bottom plot. So we have two spikes at one hertz and two hertz. So this is just another way of thinking of the Fourier transform. So in the previous slide, it was expressed in terms of x and k. So x is usually like a spatial coordinate, and k is typically like a what they call a wave number, which has, has units of inverse space. 
Um, and here we have things in terms of time, t, and uh, angular frequency, omega, which is defined in this way, 2 pi times the frequency. The code to generate these plots is available on the GitHub, so check that out. So here we're kind of getting into the uh, practical applications of the Fourier transform. Spectral analysis is just one of many applications of the Fourier transform. Uh, so spectral analysis is uh, simply the examination of a signal. So again, it could be your audio signal, uh, your body temperature over time, um, based on its constituent frequency energies. So this is applications in... Uh, can look at the spectrum of light. So we're all familiar with perhaps the Pink Floyd album Dark Side of the Moon. White light comes in, rainbow comes out, because white light is made up of uh, basic constituent frequencies of different colors. You can extend this idea to different light sources like the sun or LED bulbs in your house or fluorescent bulbs in your house or if you're, if you're really uh, struggling <laughs> uh, incandescent bulbs. Um, also, spectral analysis is very relevant to audio production. I'm a musician. This is something I do a lot. Uh, you can kind of turn down or turn up different frequency values or ranges of your audio signal. And this is relevant to make your music or any kind of audio speech. Uh, you're giving a lecture or something. You can make the audio sound a lot better doing this kind of audio production. And then finally, something I do and deal with in my research is uh, EEG, which is measuring the surface brain activity. So you can understand EEG signals, you can look at them through the lens of their uh, frequency bands. Some very widely used uh, frequency ranges of EEG are the delta, theta, alpha, and beta band. And you may have heard of like uh, alpha waves or beta waves in uh, popular culture, so that's what they're referencing. So that was the Fourier transform. Stay tuned for the next video on the fast Fourier transform, which makes this idea more practical. Again, like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'm a PhD student, like I said earlier, so I'm learning, posting these videos as part of the learning process. See you next time. See you next time. Until next time, catch you later.